joy, joy is the fulfillment of longing, expectation, and to see that that comes out of suffering and pain, that's joy. That's what makes the birth of a child. It comes out of nine months of expectation. That joy, that pain, and then that joy. My expectation for this day, as I look back, started in February the 7th, 1970, as a result of people being locked in jail, tortured, for trying to get the, the basic, the basic right, because, you know, our Constitution says that our idea was uh, the most affirming idea of the humanity in the history of the world. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all human beings are created equal and is endowed by their creator with some basic rights. Chief among those are life liberty and this pursuit of happiness. We will have to make a new sort of a expression of the kingdom of God. That's what America was to be. One nation from all nationalities under God with liberty and justice for all. By the time the ink was dry, we was unloading slaves. Justice was the day. We took justice out of God's purpose for redemption. Why, which, why God should not be just if we created all of us in his image? He is just, he is holy. Because we know sin came. And that was the hope, that was the hope that this world would see justice lived out here. The, the slave ships, that's the original American sin. Sin is only sin if it's against the law. That's what the law was given. The law was given by Moses that we couldn't fulfill for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the justice of God might be fulfilled in us. That's what the righteousness means. So what is this all about? Why are we here? Micah tried to summarize it. He said, your prophet, he have shown thee, O man, pretty conclusive, what is good and what the Lord requires of us. That is to do justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly before our God. That's mm. what this is about. Mm. Me being here today is a fulfillment of my longing. My longing has started on the floor of a Brandon jail when I was tortured. We was tortured, 23 of us. I was tortured the most. On that jail, I saw the, the depths of racism and bigotry. I saw the, the effect. I saw it in the eyes of those white torches. They looked like little green animals. It looked like that they were so joyful that they could bring me to this place of brokenness and shame. They did that. And in that I began to do what this 
mission here of to do is to listen. Listening for God. I need help. I want God to hear my prayer, but I want God to speak back to me. That's what prayer is. His listen for God to speak. Listen for his will might be done, that his kingdom would come on earth as is, is in heaven. He's going to have a kingdom of justice. He wants his church to reflect that to the world, to give the world hope. And how dark it would be that one day that what we're reflecting is going to be a reality. And we're going to see that. We're going to see that kingdom is not quite here. Abraham called it a city, a city that had foundation whose brilliant maker was God. We're going to see that city one day. It's going to come down out of heaven and it's going to have on its foundation the apostles who founded this church. They're going to succeed. They're going to succeed. They're going to be their people from every tribe, every tongue on earth. Well, we got a glimpse of that 2015 years, 100 years ago when the shepherds, uneducated shepherds, that was their occupation, was out on the field by night, keeping watch over their flock. And they heard, but we're here to listen. We're here to listen. We have to listen to each other. Heard God speak. Uh, all the prophets said, hear you the word of the Lord. When Jesus speaks to the seven churches, he said, he that has an ear, let him hear. Hearing is, is and listening is probably one of the, the greatest of the human production. The rest of it is going to be God. Because I think that's why they make him the word of God. That's why he says, in the beginning was the word. We, we was to hear the word. And said that word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Then he says the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. That, that makes cold, chills run up and down me. Uh, uh, that, that, that tells us that uh, we can be redeemed. The truth is to stop believing the lie that Adam believed that plunges this world into sin. But he, but he also brought with him uh, grace, the redemption from that truth. That's what the shepherds hear. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all people. Ain't no room there for racism and bigotry that we have practiced. Ain't no room for it. Too narrow. All people. He said it again to Abraham. You're going to be blessed by all people, all people. I bring you good news of great joy. That's good news. They heard it. Those shepherds went into the city, and they found it just as God, the angels had said. They originated this song, Go Tell It on the Mountain. That's our job. Go Tell It on the Mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that the Savior, the reconciling Savior, what we've done here, we took justice off with the first slave ship. The first slave ship messed up our decoration. We're still fighting about that when we talk about immigration. One nation. Under God, with liberty and justice for we even got on our statue of liberty. Bring us the tired, the jobless, the pain. Bring them here because we're going to seek God's kingdom. We're going to reflect God's kingdom. And he said, if you reflect his kingdom, the thing that we need would be added. We have become the richest nation that ever been dreamed of in the history of the world. 
God, God has blessed us just by our statement. That's what he tried to do for Israel. He wanted them to be an exemplary nation to show to other people what a real kingdom would look like. They rebel, and I can hear Amos, because I've called and you refuse, I've stretched out my hand to his own people and no man regarded. You had said it not all of my counsel. But before they said, oh, don't bring me your religion. Don't, don't, don't bring me all of these religious issues. Don't, don't substitute them for the gospel. Don't take abortion. Don't take these, all these other side issues. Let, let's not make religion out of them. Sorry. Let's let justice roll down like water and righteousness as an overflowing stream. We had to take justice out. We had to delay it. We didn't get a shot at it until 1964 with the Voters' Right Act because the Voters' Right Act said that black folks had become human. The Supreme Court had affirmed that the black man had no rights, that the white man had a respect. And in my state of Mississippi, there had never been a white man ever persecuted, went to jail for any bodily harm to a black person until 1966 with the Voters' Right and the Civil Rights Act. Let me give you some good news. That's good. But it's good. What the best news is that we can be workers together with God in that redemption. That makes me feel on me. That God could save a third grade dropout and a bootleg and a gambler, forgive me for my sin, and then call me. Well, y'all saw this morning, I used to work for the president. You saw me on the stage, behind the president. So, so could take a third grader through my sin. I thought I had the big head when I worked, you know. But look, he called you and me to be workers together with the creative God. He redeems us in his grace. And then he, by grace, puts us in his redemptive Work. That's what Paul is trying to say in Ephesians when he says, For by grace are you saved through faith. That faith is not yourself. It is a gift of God, not a works lest anyone should bold. All it needed was people to listen, to hear the word of God, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This is a significant event here. I'm interpreting this as a, 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 a momentous event in the history of evangelism. This would be like when we were in Calvin College back in the early 70s. This, be, this is like when we were at the YMCA in Chicago. I'm talking to Richie Mile. He was there, part of that. We were there, could see that there was holes in our gospel. We, we didn't see them as clear as we see them now. We, I think we saw that they had taken justice out because justice is a stewardship issue. Adam had stewardship of the world. His job was to name it, and really, he was the first prosperity preacher. Name it and claim it if he would do, use it for the good of the poor, if he would use it for the widows and orphan if he would use it in a distribution way that affirmed people's dignity and gave them a shot at life, a shot at work in the society. We was able to see that. What we weren't able to see as clear is that they had removed reconciliation out of gospel. That's what Paul said it was. We have now made it a, a side issue and Stockbock is thinking to turn it into a coffee selling business. He's thinking to get ready to do the reconciliation stuff. It won't work. It goes back into the gospel. We don't even preach it with expectation. 
we're not even going back to our churches looking for them to talk about reconciliation as the outcome and the ministry by which justice come. We're going to attack, we're trying to tack it in because we have benefited so greatly. And if you have benefited so greatly, if you have created a great enough system that 1% of the population could own 50% of the world resources and then another 6 to that be 7% own 80% of the world's population. And then there's almost 1 billion of the 7 billion that makes a dollar or $2 a day. We got a great productive system. We got a selfish problem. We, we got to devalue the poor. I don't talk to my buddies who own business about minimum wage. They don't talk back to me about minimum wage. I was with, I'm with them all the time. A livable wage. A livable wage. A livable wage. Well, let me, let me conclude this quickly here. What are we doing here? We're coming back to the first thing is prayer. Prayer is listening. Prayer is listening to God. Prayer is listening. God knows our pain. He's going to identify that when he comes to us. He's going to identify with our pain. Moses, as the original prophet, I see this truck that you're in. I see the pain of your enslavement. And I've come down to deliver you. And I want you to be engaged with me in my redemptive work. Signs and wonders, manna from heaven, he's going to do all that. He did it to the church. When he sent us into all the world, he told us sign and wonders. But the super sign, the super sign is our love for each other. The super sign is our love for God and our love for each other. But this made all men know that you are my disciples is the love you have one. What we are trying to do is fix it without repenting. My friend Hatfield tried to get some kind of revolt on that. Almost every year he was up there, and most of the years he was up there, he got one vote with him, and that was Senator Brooks, another black. My, my friend Tommy Hall was up there for 22 years, and he tried it every year he was up there. He got the black caucus. We haven't repented. We don't hear the word of God. If my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, listening, listening, what are you going to say? If we humble ourselves and pray, listening, turn from our wicked ways, listening. He, God said, I will hear you from heaven. Turn from our wicked ways. You can't be more slave. You can, the reason this organization of justice, we have to get going. The reason it's on the spotlight, it's really the sharpest thing. Who is trying to deliver women from slavery, prostitution, who is trying, who is trying to do that. It's on, it's on that because that, that's just the bottom. We, we're too close to life here. We're too close to life today. And so we, what are we doing here? We're putting, trying to put, Philip the hold in the gospel. Sterling said that. We got holes in our gospel. Uh, James said it also. Jude, Jude. Jude said there are spots in our love. Spots in our charity. Spots in our charity. We can name people, brand them, and then we can do what we want to. That's what you don't know about the black and white relationship. That's why it's going to take some deep confession. They're going to go back to that. Blacks going to go back to my forefathers, and they never heard no great voice of repentance on it.
repentant. If my people that I call on my name, that's why we're here. Humble ourselves and pray. Listen to God. God will hear us from heaven. Boy. And we can participate with him in that healing. I think, yes, this is my thought. You don't have to tap back, do this one to go to heaven. Uh, why don't we take an initiative? Why don't we go head on? Why don't we become cost effective? Why don't we intentionally develop, reconcile churches, plan them? We got a dialogue together here. We got a dialogue. We can do this. We, we can join together with God to do this. I make jokes about racism. If I didn't make jokes about racism, I'd go crazy. Because it's so unbiblical. In fact, the thing is, white people are getting to know that. When I talk to a white young person that is civilized, and I love it, and I love it when I talk to, talk to them uh, about it, they, 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 they can, this young generation I'm talking about can get it. They are getting it. They are getting it. You, you got to be intentional. You know, I hear it all the time. If I come to know Jesus Christ in the poverty of Mississippi, if you come to know Jesus Christ and get right with him, everything else will get right. Our people needed a job. I could do that. I started organizing health centers, co-ops, and trying to help people. Said other, I said, all of those people, those poor people, those folks was crying out day and night praying. That wasn't saving that situation. They loved Jesus Christ, but God calls us to be workers together with him. Jesus did that. When he saw the leopard, Peter and James and John saw a poor man at the temple. And they said, we don't have any silver and gold, but we have something. But they took him by the hand and lifted him up. And strength came into the legs. And you begin to joyful go into the house of God. I'm finished. I think what we've done, I think this to me might be the, you, this is a great initiative. I've longed for this day, longed for this day to come to us. I think we can do it. I think we can do it. I think God is with us. God is with us. And what he's, the workshop I was in, and these I heard on the stage, like God has been dealing with the people. We sit there and every, everything this guy was saved, my happy, was just what I'd been longing for. What I'd been longing. You know what I'm finding this now? I'm finding this now. It seems like God is speaking to us collectively. At least he's trying to speak to us collectively. Thank you all for, uh, for listening. We got to continue that, this dialogue. We got to continue this. That's what the church is about. Uh, the last thing I think, and the musicians are doing it, we didn't have any here, but that whole new group of new musicians, and that's you to the leadership. Music lead come behind redemption or go ahead of redemption. First thing we, time we see music in the Bible in a biblical, exciting way is at the other side of the sea when they sung praises to God, praises to God. And we got to develop this language of love. This art, this girl blew me out this morning with this art thing. I love all kind of art. I love art because art turns beauty into music. That's what made Isaiah the great prophet. I'm finished. <laughs> he, he turned the hope of redemption, he turned that into music. Listen at him.
For unto us a child is born. For unto us a son is given. The government going to be on his shoulder. His name going to be called Wonderful, Glorious, the Prince of Peace. And the increase of his kingdom that we're going to be a part of, there will be no end to it. Thank <laughs> you.